Hi, hello, welcome to Learn Stroke IS classes by Arjun. You're listening to the daily Hindu news analysis for current affairs news leads with Arjun R. Shankar. So wishing you all IS aspirants a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year ahead. So today we are discussing the combined news of 25th December, the Christmas news as well as 26th December 2022. So please don't forget to watch the editorial summaries where we decode editorial summaries. Today's first news, let's go to discuss the, the past scene come with a divisive catch. GS Paper 3 Environment and uh, Biodiversity, you can see in this regard, uh, two days, two, three days back, we discussed this concept of what do you mean by per scene fishing? Because you know that certain community, because it is actually divided into two categories. One of the category believes that the per scene fishing is good. Next category believes that the per scene fishing is not good because, you know, what do you mean by per scene fishing? You put a large vertical nets in the um, water floor, in the water. And uh, some of the people who do not believe in the per scene believe that this is creating a biodiversity loss as large number of turtles are being catched. When you, when you put the per scene or the large vertical net in the water, apart from catching the uh, fish, it also captures many protected marine uh, animals, many protected marine species which are very bad for the biodiversity. So some people uh, term it as a very good thing. Some people believe that it is not a good thing. So in this, you need to know what do you mean by the past scene? Because the past scene fishing is very popular in India's western coasts. It uses a large vertical net to surround dense shoals of the pelagic or midwater fish in the open ocean. And then draws in the edges like tightening the cords of a you know, drawstring purse. And... <clears throat> Uh, this is also, as I said, uh, the the, uh, the vertical net can also catch protected marine species. So the scientific community, recently you can see that the scientific community argues that the climatic conditions, including the El Nino phenomenon, are responsible for the decline declining catch of such fish in the last 10 years. So normally we uh, create an analysis that the catch of the fish is very low and this can be due to the El Nino phenomenon. And the per scene fishing is very popular on India's western coast. And uh, it is actually very popular in the western uh, coast. And in some states, it is linked to concerns about the decreasing stock of the fish such as sardines, mackerel, the anchovies and trevally on the western coast. So you can see that the uh, sardines is also very important. Because a large number of fishermen is using this traditional methods have placed the blame on the rise on the per scene fishing. So many people, including the fishermen, are blaming the per scene fishing. And uh, <clears throat> they have also demanded that uh, the center has supported the lifting of the ban. It uh, published the expert committee because the center is going to lift the ban. And the major concern that majority of the people say is the dwindling availability of oil sardine. So oil sardine is a very favorite Kerala dish, for a very favorite uh, for the Kerala fish eaters. <clears throat> it's called the oil sardines. So uh, please know about more about this. The passing fishing is very important. Next is the GS paper to help the mental health helpline gets 20,000 calls. So that is something very quick. Because what is Manas? Because the tele mental health assistance and networking across states. It's called the mental health assistance and networking across states is the manas it's a toll free number and 14416 that was launched on october 10 on world mental health day by the union government has received over 20000 calls and majority of the calls contained ranges from stress sleep disorders anxiety and the highest number of calls have been reported from tamil nadu so what is this actually based on the karnataka government's e manas service which was launched during the first wave of COVID-19, the telemanas under the National Mental Health Program now has over 24 states and union territories on board, provides basic support and counseling along with emergency psychiatric facilities. So this is about the, the manas. So know about the manas, GS Paper 2 Health. Next is GS Paper 2 Law. The Mathura Court orders survey of Shai Idga Mosque premises. So this is this brings us another important area regarding where is Shahi Idga Mosque? Because a civil court in Mathura has ordered a survey of the Shahi Idga Masjid and sought a report. 
in one of the petitions related to the Shahi Idga Mosque Sri Krishna Janmabhumi temple dispute because previously we have already heard about the Gyanvya P case and you should know that the Shahi Idga Mosque uh, was built at the Krishna Janmabhumi on the orders of Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb in 1669 in the 13.37 acre premises of the Katra Keshav Dev Temple. So it's actually in the Katra Keshav Dev Temple. It was built during the time of Aurangzeb. So that is very important in this regard. And uh, the Hindu Sena chiefs claims that the Shahi Idga Mosque was built allegedly on the site where Lord Krishna was born and sought the agreement between Sri Krishna Janmastan Seva and Shahi Idga Masjid Committee. 68, because 1968 they had actually agreed to a consensus and they called it illegal and uh, wanted to have the, uh, uh, the Shahi Idga Masjid taken away so this is the uh, the, the new prama- the problem regarding the uh, shahi idga mosque and the krishna janma bhumi next is fine imposed on anti caa protesters in up's amroha this is a new law that is very good gs paper to law because it has passed a new law which is called as the uttar pradesh recovery of damage to public and private property act to 2020 a very good act a very noble act because it is the UP recovery of damage to public and private property has found 86 people responsible for damaging public property during the anti CA and NRC protest uh, and imposed a fine of over 4 lakhs. Because you know why this law is important because uh, uh, the this act of Uttar Pradesh calls for the recovery of damages to public or private properties during Hartal, Band, riots, protests and so on from the accused through the claim tribunal. So it's, it's very important. Whenever in India you have, there is a uh, hartal or a band going, the public tends to destroy the public and private property. So this act, the recovery of damage to public and private property is a eye-opener for all the states in India. Moving on, the next is instability in Myanmar has a fallout on our side. So uh, GS Paper 2, International Relations and GS Paper 3, Defense. So this talks about the instability in Myanmar. And it talks about the important area Mizoram because Mizoram shares a long porous border with Myanmar has got an influx of Myanmar nationals crossing into it since the military coup in the Myanmar has happened. So a lot of people from Myanmar, the uh, migrants are coming through Mizoram is actually a big, big problem for the country. With the free movement, uh, you, sh- you can also say that the illegal migrant is facing difficult, but uh, the Assam Rifles is keeping a record of all those coming and going back to Myanmar. And because of the illegal migrants, the pressure on the Mizoram state has considerably increased. So Mizoram shares a long porous border with Myanmar. And uh, you can also see that uh, various NGOs are coming out to help the displaced Myanmar people, but it has been more than a year and the situation in Myanmar is very unstable so as long as the uh, the situation in myanmar is worsening it will also have a fallout on the uh, uh, mizoram in the indian state mizoram because the uh, assam rifles is responsible for guarding and managing almost 510 kilometer of the indian myanmar border so the border is porous and the major portion is riverine border and rug terrain with large number of unreachable areas so it's a very difficult task for the Assam Rifles to manage the problem. So that is regarding the instability in Myanmar has impacting uh, India, especially Mizoram. Next is a 225 kilometer Yatra to save the endangered sacred grove of Rajasthan. This brings us, I'm giving you a main question here. What are sacred groves? What are some of the challenges in the conservation measures adopted? So what are the say what are sacred groves and what are some of the challenges? you have to do it regarding the conservation so rajasthan is actually trying to save the sacred groves the demand of protection of orans or sacred groves which face the threat of destruction with their land being allotted for renewable energy infrastructure and high line tension line power lines so oran or the sacred grove forms the natural habitat for india's most critically endangered the great indian bustard so we have already discussed regarding the Great Indian Buster that majority of its habitat is lost due to the infrastructure projects that is coming on. And most often the power lines which are actually built on that area. So you should know what you mean by a sacred grove. 
So sacred groves are basically tracts of forest which are regenerated around places of worship. The sacred groves are found in Kerala, Rajasthan, Western Ghats of Karnataka, Maharashtra, Meghalaya and Madhya Pradesh. So the sacred groves help in the protection of many rare, threatened and endemic species of plants and animals and it's often related to the worship. So uh, such ecosystem is actually a livelihood for nearby resources and people also. So sacred grove is very important. Next is the poppy clocks denuded uh, Manipur hills and the chief minister has called war on tribal chiefs. So this brings us important area GS paper 3 crops. The furious chief minister Biran Singh has issued a last warning to the tribal village chieftains in Manipur urging them to stop poppy cultivation in the vast mountain slopes immediately or face life imprisonment. Because poppy as you know uh, the opium poppy is a big time drug menace and uh, the, the chief minister says that there is a no question of compromise with those drug lords who are out to earn a fortune at the cost of the ordinary people of this area. So the mountains are now bereft of trees and other vegetations which means that mountain streams are choked triggering mud and landslips. So you cannot keep continuing the poppy cultivation. So this is what the Manipur chief minister has ordered. So know what you mean by a poppy. What is uh, cooking in Harissa pot? That's very interesting. A will to break the glass ceiling. GS paper 1 history. This brings us another important area. What do you mean by uh, Harissa? Because for centuries men monopolized the making of Harissa. A mutton dish. Platefuls for which is gulped down in winter as breakfast during winter. So this is something that men used to make and now more number of women are actually created. So uh, you should know that the Harissa market has been expanding in Kashmir with more and more women now taking overtaking the men. And uh, you should know what do you mean by there is another very popular Harissa is a hot chili paste that originated in Tunisia. There is also another this is actually uh, a mutton dish plateful. And the Harissa is basically a hot chili paste that originates in Tunisia in North Africa. It's usually used as a dip or a marinade. And uh, know about more about the Harissa. Next is regarding the uh, the Rambo Rabuka returns as Prime Minister of Fiji. Rambo Rabuka. So you should know that the uh, the former military commander Sitiwani Rabuka was on confirmed as Fiji's Prime Minister. So Fiji is getting, so you should know previously we have discussed where is Fiji, locate Fiji on the map of the world. So Rambo Rabuka as the Prime Minister of Fiji. And next is regarding uh, Consumer Affairs Minister Goel unveils right to repair portal GS Paper 3 economy. I'll give you a main question here. Consumer empowerment will be a paramount feature of a developed India. And need to keep consumers at the center of all initiatives examined. Very important question. We talk about consumer empowerment as a paramount feature of a developed India. And to keep consumers at the center of all schemes in India. A good question. You need to have a right. Because uh, on the uh, right to repair portal, manufacturers would share the manual of product details with customers so that they could either repair by themselves by third parties rather than depend on the original manufacturer because the food and consumer ministry uh, introduced a host of new initiative called the right to repair portal and an nth mobile app so that is a very good thing initially mobile phones electronics consumer durables automobiles and farming equipments will be covered so that they have the right to repair either put the manual let them repair themselves or in, you know deploy third parties so that they can work it out Next is ready to work with India for steady growth of ties chase China. The Chinese foreign minister said that China was ready to work with India for the steady and sound growth of uh, bilateral ties as two com countries are committed for stability in the border areas. So this is GS paper to international relations. China is ready to have a talks with India. Moving on in riveting political drama in Nepal, Prachanda named the prime minister. The Nepal Prime Minister President Bidya Devi Bhandari appointed Pushpa Kamal Dahal, the old Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal, as the Prime Minister of Nepal. So this is actually bringing a new relationship between India and Nepal, because basically India and Nepal is based on deep cultural connect and warm people-to-people -people ties. 
and the new delhi is catching the development very closely because uh, you should know that uh, one of the given that one of the parties which is actually a key constituent of the leftist coalition which has gotten has uh, criticized india for building you can know that the new delhi would catch the development as it has criticized india for building an embankment along the mahakali river at dharchula that led to the protest by nepalis on the other side and you should know that this is the third time so this is india and nepal relation that brings us the embankment along the mahakali river in darchula and this will be the third time that the former maoist rebel leader will be the prime minister of the himalayan nation third time so that is gs paper to international relations and moving on justice department says raising judges retirement age may benefit non performers because increasing the retirement age of supreme court and high court judges could extend the years of service of non performing judges and might have a cascading effect and they can have a cascading effect with the government employees raising a similar demand so um, this is what the justice department is saying that if you increase the age of supreme court and high court judges you know you know that supreme court judges retire at the age of 65 years and the high court judges retire at 62 years the js paper to polity and law so if you increase the retirement age of judges what will happen is there are very number of non performing judges and they will also benefit the non performing judges who are not at all performing they will get more tenure and it it has got a cascading effect because the parliament the department of justice say that a large number of government employees will still claim for the increase in the age of retirement and that is a that is a concern it will be inappropriate if the increase in Uh, age and retirement is considered because uh, uh, there are many uh, if if it is a measure for transparency accountability in the appointment of higher judiciary there are many other things that we should do and uh, they say that uh, uh, the enhancement of retirement age of judges will be cascading as government employees at central and state level pscs will raise a similar demand so the 114th amendment bill the 114th amendment bill was introduced in 2010 to increase the retirement age of high court judges to 65 so uh, is it a good idea we need to have a take a look at this because in uh, because we recently know that the judges the court in, the courts in india are the biggest problem that the courts in india face is the pendency large number of cases are pending so will it solve the problem of increasing the age of judges please do think about it next is ladakh stand off is signal to Uh, india against infra construction and dispute territory gs paper to international relations it says that the 2020 standoff in eastern ladakh was a signal from china to india over how the situation is likely to play out if the continues to pursue infrastructure construction in the disputed territory you know that the uh, uh, both china and india are working at the border as long as in the infra the infrastructure because the border area the line of actual control is a very sensitive fragile area if both india and china is actually constructing infrastructure on both sides it gives a feeling that there can be a move this is a move by the uh, the army to actually engage the enemy country so uh, this is actually what uh, is actually said from this article moving on as the next article the controller auditor general detects discrepancies the in the assam nrc exercise suggests immediate action so this brings us important area who is the controller auditor general of india and what is the N- N- nrc the national registers of citizens in assam because the cag has detected large scale anomalies in the updating of the nrc in assam because when the the supreme court monitored nrc exercise began and uh, there were there were a lot of problems being detected and uh, because you know that the complete draft of the list of citizens was published in august 2019 excluding 19 lakhs of people out of the 3.3 crore applicants and the cag report said that the uh, uh, the submission made by the assam assembly said 215 software utilities were added in a haphazard manner to the core software so this was done without following the due process of software development and the development of softwares and utility for the nrc data capture and corrupt uh, in the correction post the risk of data tampering so the the whole software is been the, the the deployment of the whole software has been 
monitored and uh, questioned by the C- CAG because uh, there is a huge risk of data tampering and uh, the CAG has questioned that. And the CAG has also sought penal measures against system integrated Wipro for violation of the Minimum Wages Act. So Wipro has violated Minimum Wages Act for payment was made to operators at less rate than the minimum wages. Because the amount of wages paid to the outsourced staff was 45% to 64% less than the rate approved by the NRC Coordination Committee. So that is why NRC, the software and the data that is being used by the NRC, the software submission, everything has been questioned by the CAG. So this brings us who is the CAG. The Controller and Auditor General of India is the apex authority responsible for external and uh, internal audits of the expenses of the national and state governments. So it is actually responsible for the external and internal audit of national and state governments. And this is one of the offices directly appointed by the President of India. And uh, he can be removed uh, from office only in the manner on the grounds that a judge of Supreme Court is removed. So uh, you should know the CAG is not eligible for any further office after the end of the tenure, either in the government or in the state government. So the salary, pensions, everything uh, is determined by the Parliament of India and specified in the second schedule. So know about the CAG. And what do you mean by the NRC? NRC is an official record of those who are legal Indian citizens. It includes the demographic information about uh, all who qualify as citizens of India as per the Citizenship Act 1955. So a a database has only been maintained for the state of Assam. And uh, you should know that the Citizenship Act, you should know what you mean by the Citizenship Act 1955. And why NRC updated for Assam is because uh, the Supreme Court ordered the updation of NRC in accordance with the Citizenship Act 1955. And the process officially started in 2015 and the updated final NRC was released in August 31 with over 1.9 million applicants failing to make it to the NRC list because they wanted the deletion of illegal migrants names from the voter list of Assam. So know what you mean by NRC and what is CAG. 14 monument sites declared protected in three years. So this brings us important GS paper 1 history and culture. You can get this question for match the following in prelims. The Janardana Temple in Kerala. The Haveli of uh, Aga Khan in Agra and uh, Uttar Pradesh and uh, the Gompa complex in Ladakh are 14 ancient sites that have been protected by ASI. So no Janardana Temple in Kerala. The Haveli of Aga Khan in UP. The Gompa complex in Ladakh. If you get a three questions as match the following, you should be able to correctly get this. The Haveli of Aga Khan the Janardana Temple and the Gompa Complex in Ladakh. Moving on to the next is CPCB reports. You should know that the CPCB, the Center Pollution Control Board, what is Pollution Control Board? Shows fewer polluted river stretches, but worst ones remains unchanged. So this is basically regarding the water stretches and the pollution in general. Because the article talks about what is biological oxygen, biochemical oxygen demand or BOD. Because you should know that this, this, the pollution control, the Central Pollution Control Board is a network that monitors water quality at more than 4,000 locations across the country. And you should see that the, uh, you can see that the biochemical oxygen demand exceeding 3 milligrams per liter is identified as polluted locations. You can just take a look at this. The biochemical oxygen demand The BOD exceeding 3 milligrams per liter, the mg per liter, is identified as polluted location. So just imagine, just 3 mg per liter is polluted location. And two or more polluted locations identified on a river in a continuous sequence are considered as polluted river stretch. So that is what is called as a polluted river stretch if two or more polluted locations. So what is poly- by the BOD exceeding 3 milligrams per liter is polluted locations. Having two or more such polluted locations in a continuous sequence in a river is polluted river stretch. And uh, you can see this. A BOD less than 3 milli- the milligram per liter 
less than the river is fit for outdoor bathing so you can know that exceeding 3 mg per liter is polluted and less than 3 uh, mg uh, per liter means it's good for outdoor bathing and further it stretches with bod exceeding 30 mg per liter are considered as priority one meaning the most polluted and thus needing the most urgent remediation so there are such five categories such as p2 uh, indicating bod of 20 to 30 and priority 5 indicating 3 to 6 uh, mg per liter so there are five categories and know about the priority one which is exceeding 30 mg per liter so more than 3 mg per liter it's pollution less than 3 it is good for bathing and it is more than 3 to 6 it is priority 5 and if it is more than 30 it is priority 1 very important know it from environment perspective gujarat and uttar pradesh had the highest number of priority one stretches that means the river stretches in gujarat and uttar pradesh has the highest polluted rivers and maharashtra had the most polluted river stretches of 55 as the highest priority one maharashtra had the highest number of polluted rivers followed by madhya pradesh bihar kerala karnataka and uh, up so this brings us what do you mean by bod in simple words biochemical oxygen demand is the amount of oxygen consumed by bacteria and other microorganisms while they decompose organic matter under aerobic con- uh, conditions so in this dissolved oxygen is crucial component of natural water body so know about this what do you mean by biochemical oxygen demand or bod so uh, these are some of the most important news leads of the day so sit back and uh, subscribe the channel learn stroke is classes by arjun so read more know about the current affairs news in detail